Welcome to the Coma Electronic Complex Sequencer CV Recorder tutorial video. First, we have to update the CV Recorder firmware. So take a cable coming from your laptop or other audio device and plug it into the bank up input. And then hold the playing record of the CV Recorder together and power the sequencer on. The play button will stay lit and that means it's ready to receive the firmware audio file. So play it, and the light will become unlit as the audio file is playing. When the audio file is done, the play button will blink twice, and the sequencer will reset, and now the complex sequencer is ready to run, as well as the CV recorder. On the complex sequencer, we have seven CV recorder banks. The first four are A, B, C, and D, corresponding to each sequencer each bank has its own dedicated CV recorder CV output as well as its own CV recorder clock input that is normal to each sequencer's clock output. Banks 1, 2, and 3 come out of the CV output of the main CV recorder as well as they have their own main CV recorder clock input. To record into any of the banks, the CV output must be plugged into the CV input of the main CV recorder. The banks can be selected with the recorder here. On sequencer A, I have an ascending scale that's controlling the Artorio microbrute over here. Let's hear it. Now, if I want to record this with the CV recorder and to bank A, I first set the with the encoder to bank A in the CV recorder here. Then I take the CV output of sequencer A and plug it into the CV input of the CV recorder. As well, instead of the clock output of sequencer A, I have the gate out from sequencer A plugged into the record clock input of CV recorder bank A. I did this instead because if I change the division from anything other than divided by 4, the CV recorder will still record the notes in time. Also, since the cl main clock output is constantly running, it's better to use the gate output instead. So when I record ARM the CV recorder, it's waiting for the first gate to then begin recording instead of hitting the clock output, which will constantly have it recording even if there's no CV information coming out. Another trick is to use the end of sequence output and plug that into the start input of the CV recorder. The start input accepts a trigger to toggle the play button of the CV recorder. That way, when the CV, when the sequencer here reaches the end, it will then disarm record and start playing CV recorder. That way you have the perfect length sequence recorded into your CV recorder bank. Now, all I have to do is hit play on sequencer A and it will record one pass of sequencer A's CV output. And now the record has been disarmed. So now if I unplug the end of sequence out from the start input and also take the second CV out out of the CV in and now I take instead of the pitch from the sequencer A I will take the pitch from the CV recorder output for bank A. Now it's just arm to play, but it's not receiving a gate yet. So now if I hit play on sequencer A, it will begin playing, and it's not coming from here. So it doesn't matter if I move the sliders around, because it's what it was recorded in the sequencer A. And now I can change the speed with the divisions, or the speed knob. And it's the same procedure to record in the sequencers B, C, and D. Now, if I want to record into banks 1, 2, and 3, it's a similar procedure. But instead, I will take the pitch going into the micro root from the C main CV out. I will take the CV out of the sequencer A back into the CV in, the CV recorder. And instead of the gate out going to the record clock in, I will plug the gate out into the clock in of the main CV recorder. 
And lastly, take the end of sequence out back into the start input. Now I have to select CV recorder bank 1 in order to record to it. And now same procedure. I record arm and I play sequencer A. And now it went one pass and then disarmed record and now it's ready to play. So now if I disconnect any sequence out from start and also disconnect the CV out from the CV end and I hit play it's receiving the gate from sequencer A but the CV is now coming from the CV recorder so it doesn't matter what I do with the sliders once again and I can change the speed and it's that easy and it's the same procedure to record into, C into CV recorder bank 2 or 3 as well Additionally, we have bank up and down trigger inputs. So you could send a trigger into, into either of these and move the bank ups and down from 1, 2, and 3 only. And that applies to the main CV output of the CV recorder here. So you can scan through the CV banks in real time that way. And lastly, to save, all you have to do is hold play on the CV recorder. And it will light up. And then when it becomes unlit, your, all your banks are saved, even on power down and power up again. And that's how you use the CV recorder. Thank you.